What an unbelievable atmosphere here at the Superdome in New Orleans. Of course, the LSU campus just 80 miles away in Baton Rouge. Ohio State travels as well, if not better than any school in the country. The Buckeye faithful, well represented. Sean Godet to kick it away. Ray Small set to return it for Ohio State. And the All-State BCS National Championship game is underway. This is Jamario O'Neal from the 15. Breaks it to the outside, and he is dropped at the 22 by R.J. Jackson. Well, here come the Buckeyes offensively. 23-year-old first-year starter is Todd Beckman. Came to Ohio State in 2003, took a red shirt in 04. In 05 and 06, was the number three quarterback behind Troy Smith and Justin Zwick. Only played in six games until this year. He's only lost once. He's thrown 23 touchdowns against 12 interceptions. The Buckeyes start in a two-tailback set. And Brandon Sane at fullback. Play action. First down, incomplete, and right from the get-go, Beckman knocked to the deck by Ricky Jean Francois. The Buckeyes offensively, all Big Ten performer at left tackle in Alex Boone. A four-year starter in Kirk Barton on the right side. Chris Wells rushed for nearly 1,500 yards as a sophomore. Beckman's favorite target, Brian Robiski, caught 50 passes during the season. This is Chris Wells. He plows ahead. Out to the 28-yard line. Third down and five upcoming for Ohio State. LSU sports the number three ranked defense in college football. Their all-world defensive tackle is Glenn Dorsey. Linebacking core, Ali Highsmith, a senior, an All-American, an All-SEC performer in the middle, Derry Beckwith. And Craig Stelts, a first-team All-American at strong safety. Two tailbacks. Yeah, sorry, Tom. Two tailbacks in the game again. This is Brandon Sane, the second tailback here on the wing. That's Wells moving out. Empty backfield. Robisky, that is a first down out to the 36-yard line. So an early third down conversion for Ohio State. I think what we will see early as they pick up the first down from Ohio State and Jim Tressel and his play calling is he's going to call this game in reverse to start. He wants Todd Beckman, his quarterback, to get comfortable, get his confidence back. Short throws that he can complete, spread the field, even though they're not a spread team, using spread principles to try and get LSU out of that eight-man box, eight-man in the box defensive alignment. Wells, a big burst to the outside. Beanie Wells to the 30, the 20. A lunge for a tackle. Touchdown, Buckeyes, 65 yards. Sixty-five yards, a career-long touchdown burst for Chris Wells. What a start again in a title game for Ohio State. Last year, a kickoff return on the opening kick of the game against Florida. Now, early in the game, Beanie Wells goes the distance. Ryan Pretorius, the point after. We're not even a minute 30 in to this All-State BCS National Championship game. And an early blow delivered by the Buckeyes. Chris Wells, 65 yards, 7 0, Ohio State. I'm Dari Noke in the SEC Network Studios. We hope you're enjoying this presentation of SEC football. Due to time constraints, we move ahead in our coverage. Second possession for the Buckeyes starts at their own 41. Once again, they go empty set. And Beckman to throw on first down. Wide open, Brandon Sane. Tiptoes down the sideline, all the way down to the 15. 
Ohio's Mr. Football a season ago, an electrifying back who is an outstanding receiver. We, all, we talked at the top of the show about what LSU would show offensively, but don't let Jim Tressel's sweater vest fool you. He will show a lot of formations, a lot of different routes, and in this case, Brandon Sane, the second tailback on a wheel route, the corner tried to jump a hitch, and he got behind him, and Beckman found him. Now out of the eye formation, it's Wells, and he just plows ahead of the 10-yard line. You see how Jim Tressel has called this game in reverse Opening it up on first and ten hits the big pass play downfield watch scene. He's number three right here He's gonna get downfield on the wheel route watch the cornerback. He comes up jumps He thinks it's gonna be a short hitch to the wide receiver that allows Sane deep into the secondary before Stelts has to make the tackle But the first down passes Loosen things up a little bit inside for the run game for Ohio State Early movement along the line. All start, 71 offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. That's a junior from just outside Cincinnati, Steve Rearing. And those are the penalties that drive coaches crazy. You've got everything going your way. Don't stop your own momentum. Bo Pelini, the third-year defensive coordinator. Tonight, of course, his final game in this capacity. He moves on, having already been named the head coach at Nebraska. And by the way, he's an Ohio State alum. And he said that multitasking would not hurt his preparation. Second and 10, Beckman inside the 10, down to the nine yard line. Tripped up by Kirsten Pittman after a gain of six. It is early, not even five minutes into the game, but Ohio State could not have scripted a better start so far. It's been absolutely perfect, and Jim Tressel, Fools you with the appearance, but runs as varied an offense as you're going to see in college football when he so chooses. And thus far tonight, he has chosen to do so, and it's been very effective. And here he is coming out again, no backs, to try and pull people out of the box. Trips to the right. Small and heart line to the left. Beckman. Dropped maybe a gain of one. The fourth down of coming for Ohio State. Nice. And they'll send the field goal unit out. Nice job by Bo Pelini's defense. The tough thing to run, the tough thing about running no backs and spreading and trying to throw when you're close towards the end zone is the back part of the end zone becomes an extra defender. Guys don't have to retreat as far in their coverage. They get to come up and snug up against the receivers and have tighter coverage. That time they cause Beckman to pull it down and run it. The native South African, Pretorius, bangs it through the uprights. Nine minutes and 12 seconds to play in the opening quarter. Ohio State 10, LSU nothing. Les Miles, a Michigan man. Jim Tressel, the head coach at Ohio State. I think we can start calling Les Miles an LSU man. He's definitely an LSU man, and Ohio State likes to play man in this situation in the red zone. Flynn under heavy heat from Golston, and Hayward has to throw it away. I know Les Miles has a reputation as being a gambling type coach, but you don't do anything <laughs> but kick it right here. Colt David has set a single season record for kickers at LSU try and get three on the board and not have this drive be in vain. Nice job by Ohio State forcing Flynn out of the pocket. A 32 yard field goal try for David out of the hole to Matt Flynn. And the kick is right down the middle. And LSU with 221 to play in the opening quarter on the board. Nader Abdallah grew up in New Orleans. Proud of his defense for a big stop a moment ago. We begin the second stanza of the BCS All-State National Championship game here on Fox, along with Charles Davis and Chris Myers for our entire crew. I'm Tom Brenneman. Great to have you with us. 10-3 Ohio State as we begin the second quarter. Second and four for LSU from their own 21. And off to Hester. 
Short of the first down, it appears by a yard. Golston, Laurinaitis, Freeman converge on the tackle. Our game summary brought to you by Ford. You look at the numbers overwhelmingly in Ohio State's favor, but it's only a seven-point spread. Obviously, the Chris Well 65-yard touchdown helps tilt things in the favor of Ohio State, but you also have to compliment the play calling of Jim Trestle, throwing the ball on first down and creating good uh, big plays that way also. Out of the eye formation, they give it to Hester. A first down. Anderson Russell hit him at the 29. And Hester ran through him after a five-yard gain. That's two plays now that I've seen Jacob Hester have to take on Anderson Russell in the secondary. And so far, Hester's 2-0 and in winning that one-on-one -on -one battle, gaining additional yardage. And look who's coming to the game. Number 11, Ryan Paralu, the backup quarterback. Perilou played in 11 games this season, threw eight touchdowns, two interceptions, ran for 251 yards, and was the MVP of the SEC championship game. He went the distance in place of the injured Flynn. He's a runner. The option, he got it away to Keelan Williams, and he's run out of bounds close to a first down. Wow. And a flag comes in late along the sideline. It's going to be the late hit on the sideline, I believe, is... Williams goes out of bounds. I think they're going to flag Ohio State for a little After extra. The play, personal foul, number 92 on the defense. Late hit out of bounds, 15 yards out of the dead ball spot, first down. The thing about Paralu being in the game is that the entire playbook is open for LSU, but what he's most known for when he first comes into the game is quarterback run series. As we take a look at the end of the play, Brandon LaFell, number one, blocking on Donald Washington. I'm not sure that that was actually based on that angle. It looked like he was being pushed as he went over the sideline, but the officials right there saying he got knocked out of bounds. He was hit after he was out of bounds. Flynn right back in there, works out of the shotgun, drops it off to Williams. And the true freshman from Sewanee, Georgia, Cameron Hayward runs him down, a freshman All-American. He is the son of the late Craig Ironhead Hayward. They think he'll be a great one. Watch this pursuit by this guy inside the down defensive lineman, Craig Hayward. Excuse me, uh, Cameron Hayward, number 97. Goes through, pursues, and runs down one of the faster backs for LSU, Keelan Williams. That's a beautiful play by a defensive end and a freshman, true freshman at that, even has Jim Tressel excited by his play. A loss of the yard, second and 11. Flynn to a wide open Demetrius Bird for the 25. And a flag is down on the play, right where the tackle was made. Caught him in a zone blitz, Tom. Personal foul, face mask number 33 on the defense. Out the distance to the goal, first down. Watch coming from the top, Kirk Coleman from the right of your screen. Golston in his face, Coleman comes, but finding, in the, finding him in the hole. And right there, Laurinaitis at the end of the play has a face mask on Demetrius Bird, the receiver, which tacks on big yardage at the end of a big game. LSU quickly to the line of scrimmage and a touchdown to Richard Dixon. Coming for court, David, fourth receiving touchdown this season for Dixon. He is an outstanding tight end. And Matt Flynn has a special connection with him, but I love what the man they call the wizard dialed up there, the offense coordinator, Gary Croton, a special formation that made it unbalanced, it appeared, and Richard Dixon on the backside, and they went hurry up before Ohio State had a chance to react, and Dixon takes it into the end zone. Flynn celebrates, and we have a tie ball game. Fourth down and three, 11 minutes to play until halftime, and Ohio State sending Ryan Pretorius to the field, a 37-yard field goal try. If I'm LSU, I'm playing alert here on defense, 
watching for the fake. No fake, and it's blocked by LSU. Beckless got it at the 35. It looked like Jean Francois got a paw on the football. It's the fourth block this year of a Pretorius kick. And Ricky Jean Francois, number 90, barrels through, knocks over Ben Person, number 63, and gets his right paw up in the air and swats it away. He gets the leverage on Person, knocks him back into the backfield, and bats the field goal down. Now you see why they were so happy to get Ricky Jean Francois back on the team at the end of the year. His first game, the SEC title game this season. Clearly, the momentum has swung to the Bengal Tigers. And all the way out to the 48-yard line, it's Jacob Hester, a pickup of 15. Let's send it downstairs to Chris Myers. Top of the LSU sideline, players admitted they were a little jittery to start with things. They've calmed down. Their coach is playing as much a psychologist as anything. No real adjustments, just stay in your lanes. In fact, LSU players have said that they've given us their best shot. Now we'll give them ours. We'll have an update on Eric Stelt's injury in just a moment. The offensive line is really starting to move the defensive front of Ohio State. They run the option. Golston doesn't take the bait, but had no help behind him. And the pitch goes to Richard Murphy, and that's a gain of nearly nine. Let's take a look at the Fox jumper scope, the last touchdown. Unbalanced line back to the back to the back side, but you got a bunch out four including an offensive line of scrimmage Kirk Coleman the safety number four is playing that side because of the numbers and he does not realize Richard Dixon backside is an eligible receiver Easy pitch and catch for the touchdown after a tremendous formation sent in by Gary Croton their offensive coordinator Second and about a yard and a half at the Ohio State 45 Play fake to Keelan Williams, lobbing down the sideline. Incomplete. Malcolm Jenkins, number two, step for step with Demetrius Bird, number two. And Larry Grant put a hit on Mr. Flynn. And if Larry Grant does not get in there and disrupt the timing of that play, LSU has something going. They decided to take a shot. Good field position, play action, trying to get deep. But Larry Grant got in the face of Matt Flynn, unable to keep his feet clean step into the throw and give it his best shot. Nice job by Larry Grant on defense for Ohio State. Hester this time will come off in a slot to the left. Call it third and less than two. Flynn a short drop and there's a tight end. This time it's Singer inside the 30 to the 28. They're saying the ground caused the fumble. That is a first down for LSU. When I talked with Gary Croton before this game, what, they what he talked about was the idea of playing against the zone blitz style. Watch James Laurinaitis, number 33, in the middle. See, they're going to key him. As he moves to the flat, they just go into the hole he vacated. And when you have zone blitzes and you have to move people to cover holes, oftentimes your tight end or your inside receiver becomes a primary guy. You've got to get the ball to him early in the hole. That's exactly what Matt Flynn did. First and 10 Tigers from the 26 quarterback keeper for Flynn and coming off that shoulder injury you wonder how many of those attempts they want him to have tonight. See they want the quarterback run game in to try and even up numbers and make Ella, make Ohio State become a little more balanced on defense make them wary about blitzing and going after the quarterback but the better guy to run those plays is Ryan Perillo bigger stronger thicker guy Matt Flynn is capable but if Matt Flynn's going to get you yardage on a play Ryan Perillo will probably get you a few yards more on the same play Ohio State jumped in front 10 nothing 10 unanswered points for LSU and now they're banging on the door after blocking an Ohio State field goal attempt a moment ago they pitch it to Holiday cuts it back the other way and check what trips him up at the 16, very close to a first down. This is what spreading you, spreading out a defense does for you because now Vernon Golston has to either pitch, take the pitch man or the quarterback. He takes quarterback and then Trendon Holiday 
just navigates his way through the Ohio State defense to put him in, put them in position on third and short. A tremendous run on the cutback, but it's versus man coverage. Hard to account for everyone if you're Ohio State on defense. And of course, who's back there? Hester, number 18. Flynn on a keeper to the 15. That is a first down for LSU. Enormous swings emotionally in this game. A couple of early punches landed by Ohio State to get out in front. LSU comes up with a stop after very bad field position on a third try. Kicks a field goal, ties a game after a second lengthy drive, and now they block a field goal attempt and have marched inside the 20. And LSU's offensive line starting to take control of the game here in this position and during this quarter, as well as Gary Croton's formations limiting what Ohio State can do to attack defensively. Batted down by Grant on a first down pass attempt. Second and 10. How about Larry Grant? We've talked about James Laurinaitis. Watch Grant number six on the pass rush here. We've talked about Laurinaitis. We talked about Freeman. Grant in the face of Flynn. No one there to block him. That's the ball away. We've seen him put great pressure on Matt Flynn on this drive. Can create an incompletion. And this one he knocks away for a second incompletion. This is the fourth straight national championship game Larry Grant's playing in. Two in junior college and now two BCS championship games. He's 0-3. Desperately wants a win. Play clock down to two. One. They just do get it off. Flynn to keep it. And he's to the 10-yard line. The third and five for the Tigers upcoming. How about LSU's huddle? They huddle up pretty much right on the ball. Almost telling Ohio State we can turn around and attack anytime we want to, so you better be sharp with your substitutions. Spreading them out yet again, Tom. Try and create man coverage. Lynn rolling left, lofts it to the end zone. Touchdown, LaFell. Fell his fourth touchdown reception of the season. Point after by Colt David is good. 17 unanswered points for the LSU Tigers. Back to back to back outstanding drives. Capped off by the touchdown and a seven point LSU lead. You're watching the All State BCS National Championship on Fox. Welcome back. Matt Flynn just completed his second touchdown pass of the night, and he missed the SEC championship game with a bad shoulder. But anyone who knows the toughness of Matt Flynn did not expect him to miss this ball game. In high school, he played all the way through the state semifinals on a broken foot, aided by the blocking of Saran Black, his teammate here at LSU. LSU, its first lead of the night. Day's kick will be fielded by Ray Small at the 10-yard line. And still on his feet, crossing the 30, out to the 31. The two touchdown pass on the night by Matt Flynn. The first one, very easy. Pitch and catch, the formation caught them. But the last one I was really impressed with, moving to his left, on the run, throws against his body a perfect strike to Brandon LaFell, breaking into the back part of the end zone for the touchdown. Nice touch by Matt Flynn, and any questions about his shoulder should now have been answered. And you get the feeling this all of a sudden becomes a very important drive offensively for Ohio State. Agreed. Chris Wells met at the line of scrimmage by Glenn Dorsey and some talking going on. Beckwith and Rearing getting tangled up. Watch Dorsey, number 72. He's the big guy going to come inside and make the play, but he gets help because Marlon Favorite, number 99, clogs things up in the middle, allows Dorsey to come behind the block, fold behind the play, and make the tackle. 
You don't want to get number 72 emotionally involved in the game as well as physically. The rest of the defense feeds off of him. Greg Stelts has not come back on the field defensively for LSU. Harry Coleman, 24, replaces him in the secondary. Beckman to throw. And complete. He had an eye on heart line. And a flag comes in. There's a lot of jawing going on between the Ohio State offensive line and the defensive line of LSU. Well, the push is really coming from the defensive line of LSU at this point of the ball game. They've really started to move the line of scrimmage backwards against Ohio State's front after Ohio State had plenty of success early in the game. Watch now for LSU to lock up man for man against the receivers and try and use that big defensive front against Todd Beckman. Brandon Sane in motion. And they're coming after Beckman, who lost it to the far side, and it is intercepted by Chevis Jackson to the 30, the 25, and one out of bounds. The LSU doesn't believe Ohio State can hurt them out, out wide with their receivers, so they safety blitz. Bo Pelini dials it up, man for man in the coverage, and Harry Coleman, excuse, excuse me, Chevis Jackson, the all-conference corner, with a great pick. Harry Coleman provided the pressure with the safety blitz that forced Beckman to unload the football. And that's Coleman who just came in on this series for the injured All-American Craig Stelts. He's also the same Harry Coleman who recovered the fumble of Chad Jones deep in their deep in their territory after a punt that saved LSU earlier this game. So now LSU trying to add to a seven-point lead. Flynn, good protection, steps up, delivers a strike to the 15-yard line. The catch made by Demetrius Bird. Let's check in downstairs with Chris Myers. Tommy Eric Stelz would take it to the locker room. Officially, they're calling it a stinger. They did check him for a concussion. Worked on his right shoulder. Craig Stelz said, I'm a senior. I don't want to miss this no matter what. The trainer said, well, if we can get you all right, you'll get back in there. But right now, they're checking him in the locker room. Officially, it's a stinger. His shoulder bothering him. He was in pain when he went in there. Chris, thank you very much. A gain of eight. Playbook wide open on second and short here. Flynn rolls, looks back the other way. Wide open is Dixon to the five and to the one-yard line. Well, this number one ranked Ohio State defense right now being toyed with by the LSU offense. But Gary Croton has them so much on the run. What he does now is he hits them with misdirection earlier. He hit him with the unbalanced line and had Dixon on the backside and, in, and as an eligible receiver. This time, it was a throwback with the tight end crossing from right to left on a shallow cross. They find him again before Coleman tackles him inside the one. They hand it on first down and leaping into the air is Hester, and he is chopped down by Laurinaitis. Second and goal. Well, we talked about Ohio State in the top three in every major category. And so far, they've already allowed 17 points, 197 total yards. They only give up 225 per game on average. And look at the third downs, seven of nine. This is a team that for the year on third down is only giving up 31%. Hester denied the end zone for a second straight try. Met head on by Dexter Laramore. Not much that you can you know get on Gary Croton about tonight in play calling but if I've got Jacob Hester in that situation rather than run him from the fullback spot where he doesn't gain the momentum get a guy in front of him get Sean Jordan get Quinn Johnson the normal fullbacks let those guys hammer out a hole and let, let Hester follow in behind him I'd have him at tailback not fullback Ohio State allowed just two rushing touchdowns the entire season that's the lowest in the FBS going back 12 years in college football but right now they have their hands full with this LSU offense I think this is four down territory here for LSU if they don't lose yardage on this play look for Hester or the play fake and find a tight end I'm gonna hand it to Hester and he is met at the goal line 
No signal given yet. And now a touchdown for LSU. He got in on sheer second effort there. The one thing about Jacob Hester, hard to knock him backwards. Watch the first effort, stymied at the line of scrimmage. Right there, he's met. Looks like Laurinaitis, but then as he turns, watch him wiggle and move his body and turn and fall and stay with it. And now he falls right on the goal line. Touchdown, LSU. Point after attempt by Colt David. Good snap, good hold, good kick. 24 unanswered points from the LSU Tigers. And they lead by 14, 24 to 10, or 16 to play until halftime. I'm Dari Noke in the SEC Network studios. We hope you're enjoying this presentation of SEC football. Due to time constraints, we move ahead in our coverage. Under a minute to play here in the opening half. LSU in front 24 to 10, Ohio State to punt it away. A.J. Trapasso will send Jones back inside the five and into the end zone. So with 49 ticks to play until halftime. Looks like a heck of a matchup, doesn't it? Rematch of earlier this season. But the way the Giants played this past this past Sunday gives a lot of people hope, thinking that they can really challenge Dallas in that game. Well, now with under a minute and uh, no more timeouts, does LSU try to go down the field and tack on? They want to see what they get on the first play. Since they didn't get much there, I think they're just going to go ahead and tuck it in and take it to the half, up 24 to 10 and feeling good about how they played. Coming up on the Southwest Halftime Show, Chris, Jimmy, Eddie George, Urban Meyer will recap this opening half. We'll have the All-State Alumni Kicker Challenge on the field. Get a look at both the LSU and Ohio State marching band. Tom, as we head towards the half, about early in the second quarter, the lines of LSU started to take, ch take charge in this game, offense and defense, and that's really been the tale. What amazing turn of events after that early 10-0 Ohio State lead. 24 unanswered points against Ohio State's number one ranked defense. Set for the second half to begin, LSU in front in the All-State BCS National Championship game. Tom Brenneman back with Charles Davis. We know about Ohio State 0-8 against the SEC in bowl games. What do they have to do here to try and change that number? Well, number one, they've got to survive the first possession on defense because LSU scored the last 24 straight. Number two, they've got to reestablish control of the offensive line. They had it early. They were springing their, their running back, Chris Wells, but that shifted in the second quarter, and LSU has had the advantage ever since. You know, we talked a lot about it last year, how they fell behind, got away from the running game, and were forced to throw. And the Gators just came after and got Troy Smith, it seemed like, just about every single snap, but they never got back to that running game. And this Ohio State team is not equipped to throw the ball on every down in the second half. They're not built that way. Wide receivers have to find a way to make plays on the perimeter and defeat the one-on-one -on -one coverage Bo Pelini is going to show them. LSU to get the football to begin the second half. Ohio State, if you're just joining us, jumped in front in this game 10-0. They have given up 24 points since without an answer. Trendon Holiday will take it deep. Let's send it downstairs to Chris Myers. Thanks, Tom. I spoke with both coaches at halftime. A very calm Jim Trestle reminded his team that we got out to the lead. We're capable. We have to get back to basics. Run the football. Don't panic. That was his message to the Buckeyes. Les Miles, very fired up, high-fiving Dorsey on his way out of the tunnel. Said, we're not going to lay back. They're a very good football team. We have to pour it on. Let's go back up to Tom and Charles. All right, Chris, thank you very much. The LSU offense comes out onto the field, and Jim Trestle urging his defense for an early stop. They need one desperately here. The way LSU took charge in the second quarter, if they go through the Ohio State defense again, that'd be very, very difficult for Ohio State to handle. Early do set in motion. They pitch it to Keelan Williams. Cuts it back to the inside. A big gainer on first down of nearly 10. Coaches tell you that tight ends in your lineup 
have to control the line of scrimmage with their blocking at the point of attack if you want to run the football. Keith Zinger on that play, number 89 for LSU, did exactly that, set the corner, and allowed Keelan Williams to cut inside for a first down. One play, one first down for LSU. And now an empty backfield for Flynn out of the shotgun. Good protection across the middle. A one-handed catch made by Brandon LaFell. Coverage and the tackle by James Laurinaitis. How about that catch by LaFell, known as drops in the middle of the season. Not tonight. We look at the numbers, Tom. Ohio State with the big run from uh, Chris Wells of 65 yards. They lead the rush yardage. Passing yardage is close. Total yards favors Ohio State. But look at time of possession. LSU had it, and they really got after him in the second quarter. And now Ryan Perilou back in the ball game at quarterback. Remember, run game is his strongest attribute. He only played one play in the first half. It was an option. This time he fakes the pitch and is very close to another first down. Third and a yard, they're going to give it to Hester, and he has a first down. That's almost like money in the bank. That carry, that formation, that setup, and look at what, watch LSU. Looks like they're trying to line up quickly for a quick snap here. You got the bunch formation out wide again. You got four in the bunch. This time there's no offensive linemen. Those are all receivers or backs. Receiver screen to early do set. And that's a pickup of seven. Well, if you're Jim Haycock, how in the world are you keeping up with this offense? You're really struggling because your strength is playing zone. They like to have their safeties involved in run support playing forward. The problem is Gary Croton has spread them out with the four and five receiver looks, which almost forces you out of the out of the zone coverage and into more of a matchup man to man. Very difficult then to execute what you like to do on defense. They're taking them out of their game plan. Holiday takes a pitch, forced back to the inside, and is very close to another first down. Trendon Holiday doesn't get very many carries, but when he's on the field, see him number eight dotting the eye. Jacob Hester now moves to fullback, fakes one way, pitches it out, and look at the move. Vernon Golston's in great position, but Trendon Holiday's quicks allows him to elude Golston and get inside for yardage. How about this? Three lost fumbles all year long for LSU. And the running backs, one. And it was Trendon Holiday in the SEC Championship game when he got hurt. And the funny part is the coaches for, of those positions, Larry Porter, that coach, doesn't want to claim. He said he's more of a receiver. <laughs> and he's then, right. And then we look at it, and he's had more carries than reception. So he's got to go on that one. But all the, all the same, Les Miles loves to have Trendon Holiday in the game. Gives him a nice changeup. Now it's third and short. What Jimmy Johnson tells at the half, don't get cute, LSU. Keep executing your game plan. To me, that's Jacob Hester dotting the eye and barreling straight at Ohio State. Flynn finds a little crease and is into Ohio State territory, a first down. Second time we've seen that formation from LSU where Matt Flynn just dives in and tries to find a little crease. Joseph Barksdale, a backup tackle, comes into the game in that situation. It acts as an additional fullback to create an opportunity for the quarterback. Nice job by Flynn seeing where the hole was before he jumped into it. The Holiday back there, tailback again. And they pitch it to him. And he is clotheslined by Larry Grant and thrown down after a gain of, we'll call it two. Tom, last year in this ball game, Ohio State obviously did not have much success defensively, but I thought Vernon Golston played the best overall game for them. Tonight, it appears to be Larry Grant carrying the mantle for Ohio State, making as many plays as he possibly can, and the guy showing up when, when necessary. He's off the field now, but he's made some nice plays this, this evening. Four receivers set. Hester, the lone back. 
Flynn out of the shotgun on second down and eight. Opening drive of the second half for LSU. Under pressure, and Flynn will throw it away. And the OSU sideline screaming intentional grounding in their right. He was not out of the tackle box. Intentional grounding, 15 on the offense. Penalty is lost and down at the spot of the foul. Third down. Well, Matt Flynn has not made many mistakes, but that's a mistake. But watch the pressure from number 50, Vernon Golston, bottom of your screen, 50 in red. Carnell Stewart tries to chip him. Jacob Hester tries to pick him up, but that pressure forced Flynn to unload the ball, and Flynn was not outside the tackle box. You know, you have that extension from tackle to tackle. If you're in that box, you can't ground the ball legally. If you get outside of it, as long as the ball passes the line of scrimmage, you can ground the ball legally with no penalty. That is the first penalty thrown against LSU tonight, a team which had the most penalties in the Southeastern Conference during the regular season. And now LSU going to spend a timeout on third and along, a big play for Ohio State on defense coming up. Take a look at our impact players of the game, brought to you by Taco Bell. Matt Flynn, nearly perfect. Two touchdowns without a turnover. Chris Wells, only nine carries, 119 yards, one of them a 65-yard touchdown run. But he watches as his defense needs to make a play. Third and 23. Flynn rolls and just throws it right into the ground under heavy pressure from Marcus Freeman. So, after a couple of first downs to begin this drive, Ohio State with a stop. I like what Jim Haycock did on that last play. He played two deep zone, five under, rushed four, and used Marcus Freeman, number one, as a spy on Flynn to make sure he didn't just dart up into the middle and try and gain yardage. At the end of the play, Freeman came up and forced the incompletion. That Patrick was big. Fisher Sorry, Tom. To punt it from his own 25 and Ray Small. As it was nearly blocked and a flag comes down. This will be roughing the kicker. Personal foul, the fourth of the game against Ohio State. Penalty, first down. And that is an automatic first down. Wow. In a sense, the surprise would be rushing him here because you just want football at this stage. And then the second thing is, how did he miss the football when he went to block it? You're taught to go in front of the punter at an angle so that you get ball, and if you miss ball, you miss the punter. But instead, number 38, Austin Spittler, is straight ahead on the punter. So even if he gets, even if he, if he missed him, he was taking out the punter. End result, first down, LSU, and a drive that appeared to be stopped has now been restarted. Holy Moses. So now the defense right back on the field after thinking it had done its job. A gain of one on the pitch to Hester, and now flags come in. Is there some jawing going on? 97. Offense, 97. defense. Looks like that's going against Cameron Hayward, number 97. He got into it at the end of the play. He picks up another personal foul. Ohio State needs something positive to happen, but right now they have to fight the loss of poise. A bad play results in another bad play for Ohio State. Defense frustrated, goes back on the field, picks up another personal foul. Well, you may remember when LSU went down the field on its drive, to score for the first time on a field goal. They were aided by a pair of personal fouls. And you mentioned already, Tom, the most penalized team in the, coming into this game was LSU. But also, let's remember last year, Florida was either number one or number two in the NCAA in penalties last year in terms of most penalties and still won a national championship. Pistol formation again. Hester slips one tackle, breaks another, still on his feet, down to the 20-yard line. For more on Jacob Hester, let's send it downstairs to Chris Meyer. Tom Jacob Hester, a Louisiana native, playing the 11th time in the Superdome through high school. Uh, he's not a known John David Booty from USC since the sixth grade. He listens to Elvis before every game on his headset. The song is If I Can Dream. He said, I know it's a slow song, but it inspires me. And he is related to Terry Bradshaw. Yes, it was Hester's grandmother who married Terry's uncle. And Jacob told me it was Uncle Duck. 
even though Bradshaw doesn't want to admit it. <laughs> Flynn to throw. And the screen is set up to Charles Scott. Breaking defenders inside the five, down to the four. They just keep coming at you in waves. You think you've got one guy dialed up. Here comes Charles Scott, the third tailback. Watch number 32 to your right. It's just a delay route inside. Sneaks back inside and gets the offensive lineman to give him a little crease downfield. And then another terrific stiff arm as he slips away from Malcolm Jenkins, number two, one of the better tackling cornerbacks in the country to gain the additional yardage. First and goal, LSU. And right now, Gary Croton could pick a guy, and that guy's going to make a play for him. Play fake one way. Flynn rolls, dumps it off to early Deuce set. And he's still on his feet and dances into the end zone. Missed tackles by Anderson, Russell, and Donald Washington. What a devastating blow. After you had him stopped, a roughing the kicker gave him an automatic first down. And cap it off with a touchdown. And add to it a little lack of poise. Cameron Hayward, the freshman, picks up the personal foul. And I think there's a little spirit leaving this Ohio State team. This is a team that we saw during the season that didn't miss very many tackles, especially ones not like that. They prided themselves on being good tacklers. On that play, they have certainly did not appear to be so early. Doucette with a big move and a touchdown. Great pictures provided by the DLP. Amazing picture cam. DLP is the official HD TV of the BCS on Fox. It's amazing. It's the mirrors. Here's a look from a DLP cam on the touchdown. I thought for a while that Matt Flynn should have just approached the line of scrimmage, that throwing it early do set, many be tackled on the spot, but he missed. He made Kirk Coleman miss and then slipped through Donald Washington. And also number also number 21, Malcolm Jenkins. Nine oh four to play in the third quarter. LSU in search of its third national championship, 1958. And then here in this building in 2003 under then head coach Nick Saban. Ray Small from the 13. And good kickoff coverage all night tonight for LSU. After what looked to be a stop, LSU forced a punt. A roughing the kicker. And a personal foul against Austin Spittler. Then and Cameron, Cameron Hayward getting locked up with the tight end key singer and then capped off with a touchdown to Doucette. Early Doucette made three Buckeyes miss to get into the end zone. I'd flex two after that move early. 31 to 10. Chris Wells will carry it out to the 32 yard line. Harry Coleman is still in the game for LSU. Their first team All-American Thorpe Award finalist, strong safety. Craig Stelts had to leave the game in the opening half. And how disappointing is that for that young man because he watched his brother Kevin start at fullback, a former walk-on here for LSU when they won the national title over Oklahoma in January of 2004. He wanted to be on the field full-time to try and earn his own. Wells in motion. Beckman to throw on second down. And wide open field in front of him. To the 35, the 40, the 45 midfield. And steps out of bounds at the LSU 48-yard line. Now we were talking with the staff of Ohio State the other day, Tom, at practice. And one of the things they told us is that Todd Beckman's straight line is faster than Troy Smith. Just that Troy Smith's a lot more elusive. That was a nice run, though, by Todd Beckman. Let's go downstairs to Chris Myers. Tom, Stelz is still in the locker room. It's a right strained shoulder. They're, they're icing it. He's just come out to the sideline. He wants to get back into the game. Les Miles said if he gets feeling back on that right side, I'll put him in, but don't count on it. Wells on first down, runs right in to Ricky Jean Francois. Francois did not play the entire regular season. 
under a suspension and came back to play his first game in the SEC championship. There you get a look at Stilts trying see, to get that feeling back. You see how he's gripping his hands together? That's how you tell whether you've really got the feeling. Can you grip the other hand? Can that hand on the side that's numb grip? And until that happens, that's Jack Marucci, his trainer, to Stelts's left, our right, standing next to him. Until he can pass that test, he probably will not get into the football game. Notice LSU staying in base defense, knowing Ohio State will continue to try and run the ball, too. Beckman rolls, throws to Sane. A catch and maybe a gain of two. Zeroing in and making a stop, Jonathan Sinon. Beckman is hit on 7 of 14 for 114 yards. Without a touchdown, one interception, which LSU turned into a touchdown. And now it comes up again for Ohio State. Can their wide receivers win the battles on the perimeter to allow them to pick up a third and long? Chances are you'll see Bo Pelini apply pressure on this snap. Well split far to the right. And Beckman has to eat it. Well, he had two wide open receivers and did not see either one of them. That's what the pressure does for you because now instead of Beckman focusing downfield and finding receivers, he's he's feeling pressure. So hit, are his eyes downfield to find a receiver? See, they're running man for man with them. LSU feels again. They can't beat us downfield. I'm locked up. Coach, no problem. Go get them up front, guys. And that's exactly what's happening. Early Doucette has dropped back to his own 10. A.J. Trapasso on to punt it away for Ohio State. We're under six minutes here in the third quarter. And LSU leading by three scores. Good punt by Trapasso, and they'll spot it at the 11-yard line. So the Bayou Bengals. Leading 31 to 10. 546 to play here in the third quarter. LSU in front of the all state BCS National Championship game, 31 to 10. This Tigers drive begins at the 10. And a misread there. Between Flynn and Demetrius Bird, it's one of the few things that has not gone well for LSU on offense tonight. One of the very few things, and A.J. Trapasso, the punter for Ohio State, has changed field position finally for the Buckeyes, making LSU go the long field. And now on first down with the miscue, you're bringing up second and long. Finally, Ohio State has the chains in their favor for Jim Haycock, the defensive coordinator. They need to force a turnover, though. They need a big play to energize the Buckeyes team. Could have been that punt. That was that was huge right there. Woulda, coulda, shoulda. Hester out across the 15. And they'll spot it at the 16. And it'll be third down and well, we'll call it five. See, if they have them second and long. And now it's a manageable third down. Power run game. Sean Jordan, number 40, leading Jacob Hester, number 18. Look how they lock up. Big Herman Johnson, number 79. Just moves his man just enough. To allow, to allow Hester to follow Jordan into the hole. A four receiver set. Hester in the backfield, standing next to Flynn on third down. We'll call it four. A slant, first down to the tight end, Dixon, out to the 28 yard line. Gary Croton again spreads out Ohio State and forces James Laurinaitis, the All-American linebacker, now to cover the tight end, Richard Dixon. And Dixon beats him inside on a slant for another first down. The spreading of the formations makes guys who ordinarily aren't cover guys have to become cover guys. And obviously, you're not playing to your strength when that's happening. Flock continuing to run another first down and they hand it to Hester who breaks a couple of tackles and he picks up two. Second down and eight for LSU. Clock now under 430 in the third. Go back to the touchdown earlier from the Fox jumper scope. This is the second quarter, the second touchdown pass of the game for Matt Flynn. You have the two outside receivers run inside. 
That's Mitchell number 86 and Murphy 26. And then behind it is LaFell running an out route over the top of number two, Malcolm Jenkins. Looked like a zone blitz, and Jenkins just got beaten to the corner and a beautiful throw by Flynn, rolling to his left and throwing against his body with touch. Flynn has been waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting <laughs> for this night to play. And an interception by Malcolm Jenkins. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown. No, they're saying he stepped out of bounds at the 11-yard line. But you said it, Charles. They had to have a play to get back in this thing. And that's a play. And what that does is it energizes the fan base for Ohio State. It brings the bench back into the ball game. LSU looks like they're about to apply the crusher up 31-10 and controlling the football. And instead, they're handing hope back to Ohio State. Flynn in the shotgun throws the route. His receiver breaks inside. He throws it to the outside. So it was a miscommunication and a great pick by Malcolm Jenkins. Coming right at you now. See where the route was thrown? That was Terrence Tolliver, the freshman, breaking inside. Flynn thinks he's supposed to be outside. And they thought he was in the end zone, but he stepped out of bounds. They'll spot it at the 11 for Ohio State trying to get back in it. And they have to score six on this possession. Chris Wells down to the six-yard line. Let's see if he indeed stepped out. Right there. Good call. Right there. Excellent call. You see the official right on the spot, eyeballing it, eyeballing it on the sideline. That's terrific hustle by the officiating crew. Right on top of the play. 3.20 to play in the third quarter. Ohio State down by 21. But inside the LSU 10. Yeah, a field goal here is a win for LSU. Has to be six for the Buckeyes. And again, they'll turn and hand it to Chris Wells, and he's inside the five. And depending on a spot, it might be enough for a first down. He needed to get to the one, and he's very close to that. Might be about four inches short. To the left side of the line, number 75, Alex Boone. And it looks like they brought number 74, Kirk Barton, over to play guard on that play. And look at the hole they chopped. Leading Beanie Wells and getting some help from Ben Person, number 63. Third and less than a yard. Wells one more time, and he's denied into the backfield. Ricky Jean Francois, and now Jim Trestle on fourth down. Big decision. Big decision. See, I'm look, my, th my thought process was fourth and short. You go for it. But now at fourth and five, I'm wondering if you get the three and get something positive out of it. I thought anything less would be a, would be a win. I guess Jim Trestle's fully committed to going for it here. Yeah, my whole thought process, Tom, was that it was going to be fourth and short, not fourth and five. From the five-yard line for Ohio State, a must conversion. They can get a first down. Beckman throws, and it is a touchdown to Brian Robisky. So on fourth down from the five, Ohio State into the end zone to make it a two-touchdown spread. That's a big league pickup. Because I'll be frank, I did not think on fourth and five they were going to be able to get the ball in the end zone against that LSU defense. Gutsy pickup by the Ohio State, Bu Ohio State Buckeyes. So now Ryan Pretorius for the point after. Out of the hold of John Toma, and it is good. So some life pump back into this number one ranked Ohio State Buckeyes team. The interception by Jenkins. Capped off a touchdown pass. What a catch by Robisky. 31-17 LSU. I'm Dari Noke in the SEC Network studios. We hope you're enjoying this presentation of SEC football. Due to time constraints, we move ahead in our coverage. Ohio State with a football. 14-09 to play from the All-State BCS National Championship game. LSU in front by two touchdowns. We've talked about how important it has been for Ohio State to establish a rhythm on offense, but LSU equally important for them on defense. Their team follows their lead in how the defense plays. 
A two-yard run by Beanie Wells. Let's send it downstairs to Chris Myers. Time on the Buckeye sideline, the heads of those Ohio State players that were down on the bench. Now much more attentive after the last touchdown and then the defensive series. Buckeye players stood facing on the bench. The Buckeye crowd wanting them to make noise when LSU's offense was on the field and leading the charge in between checking offensive plays was Ohio State's Todd Beckman. Trying to lead the charge offensively and get him back in this. He delivers a strike over the middle to Brian Hartline. That's a first down out to the 40-yard line. A gain of 17. Clock stops as they reset the chains at 13.30 to go. Well done. Well protected. Well thrown. Nice route. And Hartline got the matchup he would like. A starting wide receiver against the free safety and man-to-man -man coverage. He beat him inside and picked up the first down. And a hand it to Wells. He slips to the outside. Dances over one tackler, and that's close to a 10-yard pickup for Wells. Great thing about the, the great running backs have great vision. Their eyes carry their feet to the hole, and Chris Wells loves to cut back run. And he saw the hole on the backside, danced into it, and picked up a first down for the Buckeyes. Those things are designed that way, too. Many times they're blocked, get you moving one way, wall you off on the backside for the back to follow. It is a first down run, a gain of 10 for Wells. Play action. Beckman looking across the middle. It's caught by Robisky. Another first down to the LSU 37-yard line. This looks like the Ohio State we saw early in the ball game. First and 10, not necessarily a run down for them. But because they've run the ball effectively, it opens things up. As we see Terry Robisky, the father of Brian Robisky. Tom, you alluded to him earlier, former MVP at LSU, MVP of the SEC, now the wide receivers coach for the Miami Dolphins. And don't forget his mama, Cynthia. Who, who has stressed the educational aspect. Brian Robisky, a first-team academic All-American. Lofted down the sideline with an A on Ray Small and great coverage out there by Chevis Jackson. Chad Jones blitzing from the safety spot. Put a hit on Beckman. I think that call was, a, was similar to a basketball coach feeling like his team is back on its heels a little bit. I feel almost sense that LSU thought that this game was fairly well done. Kind of shut it down a little bit. And Bo Pelini said, uh-uh, we're going to, you know, like a lot of coaches say, okay, we're going to press to get the energy back up in basketball. That blitz was to help get the energy back up for LSU tonight. Second down and 10. At the LSU 37-yard line. Play fake to Wells. Beckman dancing around and breaks to the outside and takes a hit. Ball comes loose. He was starting to slide, and right when he went into a slide, he took a major hit. These amazing pictures provided by the DLP. Amazing picture cam. DLP is the official HDTV of the BCS on Fox. It's amazing. It's the mirrors. Big, big third down. And the camera picks up the pressure as Todd Beckman sees it. Raheem Alim puts on the pressure number 84. But that was an ugly end to it. Whoever the baseball coach is at Ohio State, they need to spend some time with Todd Beckman on sliding. Third down and four. Beckman. Down he goes. He was looking initially at Robisky when he was covered. He had a stick in his pocket. So now a fourth down decision. You got to believe they're going. Trailing in the fourth quarter by two touchdowns. Especially with this field position. But the coverage again so tight. That he has nowhere to go with the ball. Jonathan Zenon locks up Brian Rubisky. Ray Small can't get away from Chevis Jackson, number 21. The routes that have worked so far is when Ohio State's been able to spread and get matchups with their wide receivers on the safeties. Can they get Robisky or Hartline in the same type of formation? Timeout. Play clock was down to four. They. Big one, fourth and seven, coming up for Ohio State. Still 10.51 to play, but right now, so far, unquestionably, the biggest play of the night. 
Fourth and seven. Beckman pump fake. Rolls right and is hammered. The ball is loose. Still a scramble picked up by LSU. All the way to the 34-yard line. Stripped by Ali Highsmith and picked up by Harry Coleman. They tried to max protect and run a two-receiver route, but because the coverage has been so tight, there's nowhere really to go. Turned out it was three receivers in the pattern, but it, it, he had nowhere to go. And once he had nowhere to go, the rush finally got to him. Highsmith with the strip. See the hustle by Pittman, 49, and Coleman continues to show up. Mr. Johnny on the spot all night long for LSU. Boy, what a game Coleman has indeed had. Covered up a fumble early in the game. He's made some big hits, big play there. Our Big 12 officiating crew led by referee John Bible and replay official Terry Turlington reviewing to see if this After was review, a review, the ruling on the field is confirmed it was a fumble. LSU takes possession. However, there was also a dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on LSU. That'll be penalized 15 yards from the dead ball spot. LSU, first down. Only the second penalty tonight against LSU. Extremely disciplined. Ali Highsmith gets to him before his arm comes forward. Ball comes free. See Highsmith, Beckman trying to get launched, but the ball, the arm is never able to come forward. So the ruling stands. Ball's free, fumble, and then unsportsmanlike conduct. And look at the anguish on the side of Ohio State. Just as hope had started to jump up there again. Now still, 10.37 on the clock. It's not over yet. It's up to Ohio State's defense to jump back in again as, as LSU goes back to the pistol formation. And they give it to Hester. And he's inside the 45, down to the 43-yard line. As we look at the clock now, LSU would love to eat up this, eat up a lot of clock with a drive here. And you notice that pistol formation, quarterback back at about four yards, running back at six or seven. I talked with the originator of that formation, Chris Hall head coach of the University of Nevada. And he told me he went to that because he liked the idea of getting the ball downhill faster to a tailback rather than side to side running out of your normal shotgun. Under center out of the eye formation this time and Hester to the 41 yard line, a third down upcoming. It's not been much offense here in the second half for LSU. We talked about were it not for a roughing the kicker call against Ohio State. Yeah. It would have been three and out on their first drive and a stop their last drive. Exactly. I mean, one of the five don'ts of the kicking game violated. You know, don't be off sides. Don't rough the kickers. Number two on that list. And boy, what a big penalty that one was for Ohio State. Third down, and they're sending a the house on Flynn. Ball batted down at the line of scrimmage by Cameron Hayward and one would assume although with plus smiles you never assume that you're going to be punting the football on fourth down never assume but if you're Ohio State you you play alert for the fake and make sure he kicks it away and don't be surprised here if LSU tries to take a delay penalty if at all possible I guess they can't you know if the clock runs down take a delay and try and get five yards to help their punter because of the space that he has on the field. Ball's at about the 41-yard line. They might, might want to take all of it and try and get him a little bit extra yardage to hang it there. They got a little confusion on their punt team, too, getting people out there. I would take the delay if I were them. Well, you called it, Mr. Davis. They won't get it off. They're going to back it up five yards and give it a little more time. They're not running any... Fourth down. Obviously, with the incompleted pass, they're not running any time off the game clock. They're just trying no. to give their punter a little more room to try and exactly. get them deep inside the 10. And if you're Ohio State, I would have thought about declining it, Tom. I, I don't want to give him the extra five-yard cushion for the pooch kick. I want to keep it right there at the 41 and say, okay, if you can handle that one, you're in great shape. Coming up next on the DirecTV postgame show, it'll be Chris Rose, Jimmy Johnson. 
Eddie George, Urban Meyer, for the All-State BCS National Championship trophy presentation, and the most outstanding players will be announced. High punt by Fisher, and it bounces. That's into the end zone. See, in, in college, as soon as the player breaks the plane and is in the end zone, that's it. 9.02 left, 31-17 LSU. But again, Ohio State has fallen behind and not handing the ball off much. Give it to Wells on first down, and he'll pick up close to four. Clock now under nine minutes. Last Todd Beckman has hit on 10 of 18, 149 yards. He's thrown an interception, thrown a touchdown. He has fumbled the football. But he was under heavy duress on the fumble. He was out there trying to make a play. Obviously, you want your quarterback to protect him. He was trying to get a pass off, and Allie Highsmith was just too fast for him and forced the fumble before his arm could come forward. Well splits far to the left. Empty backfield. And Beckman fires to Robisky. And he needed to get to the 30 for a first down. Looks to be a little bit short, which will keep the clock running. I have to think about moving to with a little bit of haste now if you're Ohio State. It's not total, it's not a place where you're in a total hurry up, but you're thinking about getting guys in and out of the huddle, off the sideline, getting a play called and keep it moving. With two scores still to make be made up. Well, they're wasting a lot of time here after first down on the handoff to Wells, second down, huddling up. And then they come out quickly out of a tight formation or into a tight formation and didn't get it. And Wells denied the first down. Ohio State gonna have to go with seven and a half minutes left, trailing by two touchdowns. And what's different this year, you remember last year when they went for that fourth down in their own territory yep. and didn't get it, and that was pretty much the ball game? This one is one where you have to go for it. There it was a decision and a gamble by Jim Tressel. This is one you have to take that gamble and go. Need a yard, maybe a little less than a yard. Two tight ends. They give it to Wells. And he appears to have enough for a first down. Clock will stop, 7.04 until they reset the chains. Jim Tressel, the 55-year-old mentor at Ohio State, has guided an already story programmed even greater heights. Seven bowl games, seven years, five BCS bowl games, five 10-win seasons. Four Big Ten titles and a national championship. It's their third title appearance in the last six years. But last year, it was ugly. Out of the shotgun, Beckman throws. And was the catch made? Yes, out to the 44 by Ray Small. Clock will stop again, 6.49 after the 13-yard completion. I've got to give credit to these wide receivers for Ohio State as this game has progressed. There's still times where they're not able to shake free of coverage in key situations, but when they've gotten open tonight, they have made the catches. Tough or easy, it doesn't matter. They brought, they brought the ball down. Beckman hit from behind, and he covered the football. Dorsey, we have not called his name much tonight. That doesn't mean he's not creating <laughs> openings for everybody else around him. You're exactly right, because you know people got double and triple, and there he is right there, number 72. And he just beats Steve Rearing, number 71. Jim Cordell, number 64, tries to come over and help. But it's too late as he boxed the ball free from the back, and Beckman alertly falls on the football. I tell you, Charles, I am stunned Ohio State is not in a more hurry-up mode offensively. They're huddling just, up every down. I'm watching the clock. I would just think that they'd be a little more high tempo and still huddle, but you have to increase the pace. In and out of the hands of Brian Hartline. Excellent coverage by Chad Jones. Jones, an outstanding baseball player, drafted in the third round by the Houston Astros. Many believed he would have been a very high pick were it not for him letting everybody know that he wanted to play football. And he wanted a great deal amount of money, probably more than that slot. Brandon Sane, we haven't seen much of. Remember how the game started with the wheel routes? There he is. He's back in the game now, number three. I'm at LSU. And That's that may have been why LSU spends a timeout seeing Sane back on the field. 
5.50 to go. Bo Pelini tells his team you have to earn the right to rush the pass around third down. Well, third and 15 gives them that right. Beckman intercepted by Curtis Tanner. And the celebration begins in the bayou. You hear that music in the background, LSU saluting their defense. That's the theme music from the old TV show, Terry and the Pirates, where Paul Dietzel pulled his defense, the defensive name he had, the Chinese bandits, who were known as the meanest people in all of the land at that time. And that's where the music came from, and they still salute the LSU defense after third down stops or turnovers. So now Matt Flynn, the senior from Tyler, Texas will bring his team out onto the field. 5.43 to play and a two touchdown lead. And they're gonna throw it to early set on first down. And he is out of bounds. Well, very surprising, A, they're throwing, and B, that you're running out of bounds. Yeah, I think B is the more egregious deal there. Early set's a senior, he's got to know better. Clock running is what you want if you're LSU. You've got enough points at 31-17. But what's the other, the clock, is now your friend. Stay in bounds, let it churn. I'm sure his sideline gave him an earful as he danced over after that play. I think we'll see a little more of Hester in this situation. Well, they fig the handoff to Hester and then Flynn gonna keep it himself. Picks up two. Third down and three upcoming. Time now for the All-State Good Hands play of the game. And this was a sack on that fourth down by Highsmith recovering. Allie Highsmith, an All-American, the first All-American linebacker at LSU since Brady James in 2002. Man, that guy was a player, Brady James. Yes, he was. Oh. He's the first AP All-American since Michael Brooks in 1986. Throw it to Doucette. And did he get enough for a first down? It's going to be a close. Depends on where the, where the foot goes on the spot. Laurinaitis had him around the leg. And then when he came down, it depends on the spot. And you know something? I think they're signaling fourth down. But if you're LSU, you go for it here. You know why? Let the clock run. Possession is huge. Putting the ball away. Field position, not as huge with a two-touchdown cushion. You find Jacob Hester 18, or you run Matt Flynn on the sneak, and you keep the football and get another set of downs. Of course, fourth down becomes part of the M.O. for Les Miles. Oh, yeah. Joseph Barksdale back in the ballgame, number 78. They've run sneak here before. And they do again, and they do to convert. Of course, it was that Florida game when on fourth down, Les Miles five times went on a fourth down call and was five for five in that huge win over the ninth ranked at the time, Florida Gator. Take a look from the Fox jumper scope. The momentum change, 10-10 game, the block field goal by Ricky Jean Francois. And the momentum turned around just like that. He just ran over Ben Person, the guy assigned to block him and got his right hand in the air and knocked the ball away. And instead of a 13-10 game Ohio State, LSU went ahead and continued their march. Lynn lets that play cock roll all the way down to two before the snap. They hand it off to Hester. You know, they're people that have been around a long time watched LSU football, and it's hard to argue that this is truly the golden age in the very rich history of the Tigers. A school record, three straight 11 win seasons. We'll talk more about that in a moment. You know, continuing that theme, Charles, about is this the golden age, I mean, of LSU football? Three straight 11 win seasons, an SEC title, two bowl victories. This would be a third back to back top five final rankings, seven first team All Americans, and now a shot at a national championship. H hard to argue that yep. it's not the most impressive era of football for LSU and frankly hard to say that there's an end in sight 
Flynn picks up another first down to the 30-yard line. Let's go downstairs to Chris Myers. Well, you mentioned Bo Pelini, who went to Ohio State, and he's taking the Nebraska head coaching job. And, Tom, he, he told us that he is loyal to his players here and that he would not have taken the head coaching job in a day and age when some guys take jobs and bolt from their school. He said he would not have taken it if that was the case. It, would, it was understood between Les Miles and the folks at Nebraska that he would stay here to coach LSU in this championship game. He also wanted us to say hello to his father, Anthony, watching back home in Ohio. He's proud of his son who wanted to be here fighting an illness. is doing a lot better now. It's amazing the Ohio connections, Charles, we have seen in back-to-back -back seasons here in the national championship game. There's a pitch to Murphy to the inside and still on his feet down to the seven-yard line. Let's not forget Les Miles for all that Michigan talk and about whether he would return to his alma mater. He grew up in Elyria, Ohio, just outside of Cleveland. Played at Michigan for Bo Schembechler, and everybody and his brother, except for him, thought he was going back to Michigan upon the retirement of Lloyd Carr. And he's got to paraphrase his beloved head coach who just passed away last year, Bo Schembechler because he's now an LSU man, and an LSU man is going to coach an LSU team, and it appears for a long, long time. Linda handed off, and that is Scott met at the five-yard line under two and a half minutes to go. Laurinaitis on yet another stop. 18 tackles, which is a BCS Bowl game record. The, the, the two leading tacklers, both linebackers, Laurinaitis and Freeman, not all that unusual. But Coach Urban Meyer said in the pregame show, the strength of the Ohio State defense is their front seven. But a lot of the defensive line neutralized for much of the ball game, thus the high tackle numbers for the linebackers. Flynn rolls wide open as Dixon. Point after by David is good. And you think the streets, Bourbon Street in New Orleans will be rocking and rolling tonight. Richard Dixon, a pair of touchdown receptions tonight for Matt Flynn. The first time he has thrown four touchdowns in a game. What a time to do it. When the BCS started, the first champion in 99, your alma mater, Tennessee. A year later, Florida State, then Bob Stoops. The Youngstown natives celebrated a championship. Miami in 02 lost to Jim Tressel in Ohio State in 03. Under Nick Saban, LSU a championship in 04. Pete Carroll in 05. Then Vince Young in an electrifying game, won it out west in 06. Last year, the Gators over Ohio State. And a minute 50 away with a 21-point lead. It appears to be LSU for the second time in the last five years. So they would become the first repeat champion in the BCS era and the first two loss champion in the regular season in the BCS era. Well, we have met some fine young men in this college football season. I'm not sure you could meet a sweeter kid than Glenn Dorsey. I oh. mean, you know, so highly decorated and everything he's done on the field. But what a kid he is. Raised in Gonzalez, Louisiana. Did a great, they did a great feature on him in our pregame show. He's a guy who overcame wearing, have, having to wear braces on his legs as a child, unable to play while the other children were playing until his legs got stronger. Small out to the 40, still on his feet to the 46 yard line. Coming up next, Chris, Jimmy, Eddie, and Urban on the DirecTV post-game show. 
of the All-State BCS National Championship trophy presentation and the most outstanding players. And Les Miles about to get real cold and real wet. And the happiest man in the world to get just like that. Sean Godet, the kicker, was injured trying to make the tackle. That is Godet. That was the kicker trying to make a play. We certainly hope he's going to be all right. And that is not Les Miles. Looks like Coach Henson. Yeah, that to me, that, I, that looked like uh, Josh Henson, the tight end and recruit, tight ends coach and recruiting coordinator who got the first bath. evening obviously for Jim Trussell and the Buckeyes but in a lot of ways they got here to this BCS national the all-state BCS national championship game a year ahead of schedule picked third in the preseason in the Big Ten many people had said even before this season 2008 is when you really need to look out for the Buckeyes and depending on whether a number of guys will take early entry they could very well be right back in this game next year Heart line chopped down. We talked about the youth of this Ohio State team. It is remarkable the job that Jim Trestle has done this year. I mean, championship game notwithstanding, when you think they only start three seniors, and really only two of them play regularly. Exactly. A junior class, which if they do lose players, maybe one or two, and then everybody else, a sophomore, a freshman, or a redshirt freshman. Exactly. They could come back with the same cast of characters with a year, year's, ex, year's extra experience. But have interference on the play. The coverage looked like Jai Eugene, number four, trying to make the play. Receiver trying to jump back inside and get to the football. Had no opportunity to do so. Flag comes out. You know, Charles, I think you and I were both just stunned. Pass interference, defense number four. It's a 15-yard penalty, first down. I'm not sure if you'd call it venom. I'm not sure if you'd call it bile. I'm not sure what you'd call it. But it was amazing all the heat Ohio State took after that national championship game. They laid an egg. I mean, there's no they debate did. about that. They no just doubt. got walloped by Florida. But, but it's not as though they were some Johnny-come-lately <laughs> program. I mean, this is their third trip to the championship game in the last six years. And only USC has a better record over the last seven seasons overall. Yeah, unfortunately, it was the national stage, and everyone took that as that was the whole thing of the program. Not really true. As we look at LSU now, trying to become one of those elite programs that you talk about year in and year out. They've had a storied history, but even within the SEC, yep. they haven't been the elite program. You know, you were talking about the Alabamas, Florida in the last 25 years, Tennessee, you know, those types of programs, Georgia, now LSU, firmly in that pantheon. Oh, yeah. There's no question about it. They'll be the ones to beat, it appears, for a while in the SEC. I know Coach Meyer sitting on the set thinking, I've got to take them on again next year, and he hopes to have his shot as do a number of teams, but they'll be right there doing battle. Lofted into the end zone, Robisky up into the air, caught it, but out of bounds. I love the effort as this game winds down. You, you notice these young guys playing as if they're, there's no clock to worry about. You know, they could have very easily, hey, we take a knee, we run the thing out, we get out of here. They're playing this thing out with full effort. It's, it's fun to see. It's nice to see. And you talk about the great young men we've met during this bowl season. They've all been tremendous. It's, it's been a lot of fun meeting all of them. And I want to go to Glenn Dorsey's hometown of Gonzales, Jambalaya Festival every year. Huh, sounds good. Slant by Hartline, and he will race into the end zone for a touchdown. So with 113 left, and makes it a 38-24 game with a point after. And yeah, go kick the extra point, and then you know we're going to line up for an onside kick. There's no way Jim Trestle's playing this thing out, not going to play this thing out. There's just no way. That's not, that's not part of who he is, nor would Les Miles do it the same way on the other side. Nice throw by Beckman. Well thrown ball, heart line with the catch. Breaks a tackle and gets into the end zone. Pretorius with a point after. 
to make it a 14 point spread with 113 to go. Seventy nine thousand six hundred and fifty one uh, Superdome record tonight. And again, a reminder, our direct TV postgame coverage coming your way. The trophy presentation, the most outstanding players and final thoughts. Our All-State BCS National Championship game produced by Mike Burks, directed by Rich Russo. Our associate directors, Tom Yoey, Rich Dewey, Darren Foster. Our broadcast associates, Justin Deutsch and Andy Cavanaugh. Technical producer is Frank Phillips. Pre-game show produced by John Entz, directed by Jonathan X, a senior producer at Fox Sports, Bill Brown. Our executive producers at Fox Sports, Ed Gorn and David Hill, our thanks to our entire crew on this onside kick, a heavy lick delivered by Malcolm Jenkins, but Charles Scott hangs on to the football. Want to thank our entire crew. They have been here for two straight weeks away from their families, leaving just right after Christmas and leading up to New Year's and they've been here and we cannot thank them for all of their hard work Team number one that five yard penalty be added on to the end of the possession first down got a little offside on the onside kick but Charles Scott fitting that he came down with the ball Tom because when you talk with the LSU coaching staff one thing they'll tell you is he's a tremendous offensive football player we love what he does for us carrying the ball but he's a terrific special teams guy. You know, think about it. We've seen five different backs carry the ball for LSU from the running back position tonight. All of them obviously wanting to compete for carries. But we, when you don't get to that number of carries, you have to contribute in other ways. And that's exactly what Charles Scott has done all year long. Starting to see the emotion now from Les Miles, 54-year-old Valerio Ohio husband and father of four. In his third season at LSU will bring them a national championship. Of course, you think back to his inaugural year in 2005. In August, Hurricane Katrina hits this region of the country. They cancel their first game of the year. They go and play on the road at Arizona State. They that have was a, thrilling, a scheduled home game. Yep, thrilling come from behind, 35-31 win. No sooner do they celebrate that, Hurricane Rita hits this area. Yes. They lose to Tennessee. On a Monday night or at home. And Bo Pelini. Take that to Nebraska with you, Bo. And if you're, if you're a young man who's playing at Nebraska and you play defense, under that guy, you'll have a chance to become the Black Shirts defense again. Remember, they decided they, they, they pulled the Black Shirts tradition last year so they could get it back. One minute left to go. Charles, everybody we talked to this senior class, they talked about Katrina. Yes. And the lives it affected so many of the players in this senior class who grew up in this city, who grew up in this state. And what LSU football meant to so many then the campus and all it did to embrace those in a time of need and now collectively two years later they'll celebrate a national championship you're exactly right and and for a lot of people from the outside looking in they're saying now ah, does football help people in that type of a situation well everyone was in such dire straits they needed one thing to feel good about and LSU football has been something they felt good about for a long time and that helped a number of people through a very very difficult situation well, congratulations to the LSU Tigers. The 2008 All-State BCS National Champions. Let's send it downstairs to Chris Myers. With senior Glenn Dorsey, and have you seen the papers? Uh, LSU number one, congratulations. What was the difference in the game? 
I think we had to get over that version, or they came out ready to play. And we just want to sustain that and overcome it and stay within ourselves and play hard. Were you a little bit nervous to start the game, this team? I'm always nervous before a game. That's how I know I'm ready. And my team came out and played hard. There was a chance you might not come back for your senior season. You went through some injuries. You fought hard. Are you glad you did? Without a doubt, my team is the number one team in the land, man. It's right now, it's great to be an LSU Tiger. I love it. I love my, my home time because I love Battle Royale. I'm great to be a Tiger. All right, well, there'll be some celebrating tonight. Congratulations. We'll see you in the NFL. Thanks, man. Y'all take it easy. Thank y'all. All right. Glenn Dorsey. Tom? Thank you very much, and thank you, Mr. Dorsey. It doesn't matter if he's going to be playing pro football or not. That young man would be successful whatever avenue he were to take in life ahead. 38-24, LSU defeats Ohio State to win the national championship of college football.